How do you make that differentiation? Differentiation is really down to, our, to the IP that the company really files. So we rank companies based on two different dimensions. It's one, total number of IP that has artificial intelligence as objective, mm -hmm. as a percentage of the total IP filing of that company, and how much of AI IP filing that company files in respect of globally all the IP that is filed on artificial intelligence. Yeah. So it's really how important is AI for that company, uh, how relevant is that company in the AI IP generation. So, but even if you have companies that haven't necessarily filed for the IP, you do have industries that are out there uh, that could really benefit in a big way from the development of AI. So, uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, sectors like insurance, for example, that are very paper heavy, um, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of this is going to be automated moving forward. So, how do you quantify that part? Well, that part at the moment in a human-based research process is impossible to quantify, right? So, those, by definition, that those companies will be totally missed in the traditional way of looking at the sector, traditional way of identifying a macro, one of the, those macro teams. If you are really using artificial intelligence, we will be able to capture as soon as they file some IP or as soon as they start using it. But that's exactly the, the, the big difference that we discover when we look at the two versions of the, the, the semantic index. The artificial intelligence base, the, so the one that you, is done by the machines, already has a big representation in the financial sector. JP Morgan filed plenty of, of IP using artificial intelligence to mm -hmm. optimize their cost structure. Mm -hmm. That's the reason why it's one of the top constituents of the AI artificial intelligence base. Uh, I'm fascinated by you know how, how this could really change a lot of things and you know reduce the paperwork and just ba basically be a time saving uh, factor. But when it comes to actual industry, the one that seems to impress people the most, that gets talked about the most, is in the health sciences, mm. uh, in connecting people who don't have physical proximity, say live in areas and don't have access like others in metropolitan areas to healthcare, to robotics, to robotic surgery, to distant surgery, telemedicine in all its forms. And I'm kind of wondering how big a theme that plays into stocks and what you're doing. Yeah, what we have done, we have identified a series of themes that, a series of sub-themes uh, within uh, the disruptive technologies. Artificial intelligence, robotics and automations are some of the few that we already launched as products that are being licensed already to some of the largest ETF providers, iShares in particular has been very successful in raising capital in the thematic ETF space using our uh, automation and robotics index. The, the next extensions are clearly, you know, driveless, uh, um, uh, you know, the, the automation in the auto industry, uh, the type of uh, technology that can really be disrupted in the way we live. Part of that is, of course, that there is a cross-session with the demographics, you know, the silver aging of the population and how that, and what's the impact of those technologies into the, into the new population, the, the trend of demogra demographics. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.